Figured you were probably figuring out why I gave it to you, but it's, it's, it's about Mom's Day. The Sound of Silence. There's a pretty good record from what I remember, but we're talking about the sound of silence in heaven. Now, when we talk about heaven, I don't know if we're talking about specifically the area where God's throne is or if we're talking about all of the creation of heaven. It doesn't tell us that. What the first verse in the eighth chapter tells us, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. In Revelation 6, Christ opened six of the seven seals, and severe judgment started happening on the earth. Chapter 7, there was a small delay. They had to seal the 144,000. Then Christ opened up the last seal. This was a very serious and sacred moment. This event was so important that there was a complete silence in heaven for what John said about a half hour. Can you imagine that? Heaven was a place of rejoicing, singing, praising, worshiping. It was continuously praising God. But here for a half hour, it fell silent. I don't know that I've ever been anywhere there was complete silence. I, I don't know what you'd have to do. There's always going to be some ambient sound. There's always going to be something. But here it says there was silence. Wasn't anybody coughing? Wasn't anybody snoring? Wasn't anybody singing, praising? It was silence. It gives God no pleasure when he must punish the wicked. We find that in Ezekiel 8, 32. And by the way, the scriptures that back up today is on the back of the bulletin again. I highly recommend you read chapter 8 and look at these accompanying scriptures. <clears throat> but Ezekiel 18, 32 tells us that God is not, ever, takes pleasure in punishing it's a serious time. It's a time of silence in heaven. Revelation 8, 2. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. Well, trumpets, a lot of times, are used in the military, and they're the sound of gathering. They have different commands that go with the trumpets. Um, Nehemiah used them to defend Jerusalem. Um, Sheba tried to start a revolution in uh, 2 Samuel 20. <clears throat> I had to read on that. <clears throat> I wasn't as familiar with that as I should have been. And when I seen that reference, I turned over there and read about that. That was interesting. Gideon used it in the battle. People used trumpets on happy occasions. New king in Jerusalem in 2 Chronicles, trumpets are used. Sacred holidays. It's joyful. These are going to be different trumpets than any trumpets that's ever sounded. <clears throat> when these trumpets sound, terrible things are going to happen upon the earth, in the sea, in the skies. There's currently wars going on now and wars going on when John is seeing these revelations. But the tribulation against the earth had not really started. Many things had happened, but not nothing like what was coming. In Ephesians 6.12, we're told the angels are fighting to defeat Satan and his evil spirits. There is a battle in heaven, has been, since man was created, since Satan fell. There's been a battle going on. This has real-world consequences. The purpose of the seven trumpets becomes clear when we get to Revelation 11, verse 15. It's a declaration that Christ is king 
and his rule is going to be starting and never ending. That war will be over. But we're not to Revelation 11 yet. Revelation 8, 3 through 5. Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was giving much incense to offer with the prayers of all of God's people on the golden altar in front of the throne. The smoke of the incense together with the prayers of uh, God's people went up before God from the angel's hand. Think about that for a second. Your prayers, our prayers, are combined together going up to God and pleasing God. Don't know that I can fully wrap my mind around that. But I can understand that when we pray, we're pleasing God. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it at the earth. And there came pearls of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and earthquake. The future rule of Christ is certain. It's his Certain as if we we're already in the thousand year reign. It's as certain as if we're already in eternity. It's certain. The judgments that have to happen before that happens have not happened yet. You would think that our prayers wouldn't matter much to God with everything going on. But in God's opinion, our prayers matter greatly. God listens to the prayers of his people. We pray for healing, and we receive healing. Sometimes we forget to thank the healer. We're really quick to pray when we're in a difficult situation. We're a little slow to praise when we're delivered from that situation. Amen? Well, that's a pretty reluctant one. I was talking to a fellow that goes over to one of the black, share, uh, black churches, an A&E church, and we were talking about the responsiveness of Methodists and people of African descent. He said, well, it's just culturally different. I says, I know. Can we swap congregations a Sunday? I said, I'd just like one Sunday, you know, just one time. You all mind if we just swap you all? He gave me that kind of look, too, you know. Some of you may know him, Dr. Smith, but he, um, I don't think he knows how to take me real well. God listens to the prayers of his people. He considers those prayers beautiful, like incest. He loves us. The gold altar in the temple here on earth was where the priests burned incense. Hebrews 8.5 tells us that the temple was a copy of the real one in heaven. Even on earth, the fire in this altar was holy. We find in Leviticus 10.1-2 and Numbers 16.3-5 that that fire killed people who were acting in an unholy manner. But then we find in Isaiah 6.6-7 6, the fire made Isaiah holy and took away his sins. So God's fire, cleansing, purifying fire, does many things. The fire that we're going to talk about here shortly acted against the judgment on the earth, it caused the ground to shake, it caused a great storm. Normally, we do not think that we're asking for God to rain down judgments on our head. Oh, God, bring thy judgment. Send down the blood, the hail. Anybody ever pray that prayer? Yeah, well, me neither. But when you pray, when you pray this, dear Heavenly Father, we pray for the return of Christ. Guess what you're actually praying for? The judgment. Because that has to happen before Christ can return. Yeah, makes you a little cautious on what you pray for, don't it? These things that we're going to talk about can only happen when God acts in judgment against the evil forces and the rulers of this world. 
and they must happen. Folks, this is the beginning where it's going to get really kind of bad. The first trumpet. A storm destroys a third of the earth. A third. Think about it. A third of the earth. Let me read the verses. Revelations 8, 6 through 7. Then the seven, um, seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down on the earth. A third of the earth was burned up. A third of the trees were burned up. All the green grass was burned. Burned up. Here we've got a third of all the trees, all the green grass. Everything's burned up, a third of the earth. Can you imagine right now if we took and burned a third of the earth, what it would be like for the two-thirds that was left? What do you get from fire? David, you're a good guy on fire. What, what do you get a lot of when you burn something? And? And? Smoke. Burn a third of the earth and tell me how smoky it's going to get. Right now, remember the forest fires and stuff we had down in, in Florida a couple years ago? You could smell them here. That's just the starting. That's the first one. In verse 1, there's this terrible storm. A third of the earth is burned up. This is worse than any storm that's ever happened. And this is just the beginning. But it has to happen before Christ can return. God said the earth would suffer because of people's evil deeds. The earth is suffering. It is a third burned up. There's fire. There's ice. There's blood. We've had that happen before in Exodus 7, 14 through 24, and Exodus 9, 13 through 35. But it was always just to one country or one area, never a third of the earth. Here's the amazing part. Even with one-third of the earth burned up, people refused to turn to God. They become more angry, more bitter, and more evil. Now we get to the second one, the second trumpet. This is where the burning mountain comes into the sea. Revelation 8, 8 through 9. The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. A third of the oceans. We are an ocean planet. And a third of the oceans are destroyed. The creatures are killed. A third of the ships at the sea are destroyed. It turns to blood. There's nowhere to go to escape the judgment of God. When the fire burned up a good portion of the earth, I would imagine a lot of people went to sea. Water. Can't burn me there. John saw this huge object like a mountain. Well, I don't know if he had ever seen an asteroid, but we know what asteroids are. We know what <coughs> small ones are. We know what, at night when you see a, what we call a shooting star, some of them are just grains of sand, and look how bright they are, and look how much they fill the sky. Now here's going to be a giant mountain, mountain. When the flaming mountain hits the earth, the top will still be in space. It's more massive than anything's ever hit the earth. But it's not just an asteroid. It fell into the sea. A third of the sea become blood. A third of all the sea creatures died, and a third of all the ships were destroyed. Many people died on the first trumpet and now on the second trumpet. A third. However, people still not did not turn to God. The 
No event, however terrible, seems to convince them that they should serve God. Now we're moving on to the third trumpet. A star spoils a third of the fresh water. We burned up the sea, a good portion of it, but you can't drink seawater mostly. It's tough. We got a third of the earth destroyed. Then in Revelation 8, 10 through 11, the third angel sounded his trumpet, and a giant, a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. Verse 10, this great star falls, called Wormwood. Possibly another asteroid? Could be. We know that it's burning, it's big, and it destroys one-third of all the fresh water. There's a giant battle going on in heaven, and these are the consequences of it. But nowhere does it say God's causing these judgments to happen. He's allowing them, but it doesn't say he's the direct cause of it. In fact, Revelation 9-11 says that evil forces are doing these things. We'll get to Revelation 9 next week. God permits these things to happen as his judgment against the earth, but he never approves of any evil act. One-third the supplies of fresh water. We have to have water to survive. We can go a long time without food. You ain't going to go long without water. And it's bitter. It poisons people. They die from it. If you take a person who is dying from not having water, they will drink anything. There's nothing they won't drink. And it will kill them. But the people that survive continue to offend God by their wicked acts. The fourth trumpet. It's the last one we're going to get to today. The fourth trumpet. A third of the day and a um, third of the night become dark. Revelation 8, 12. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. I'm not exactly sure if it's just going to be a complete one-third without than the other normal. But if you took and reduced the light coming from the sun by one-third, what would happen to our crops? What would happen to our temperature? Yesterday was a fairly hot day, and I'm out working, and I got hot, stood under a shade tree, and it felt really good. That's how much difference there was between being in the sun and being in shade. Now, can you imagine one-third of the sun being gone? A third of the moon at night? Folks, we're talking some horrendous, horrible things, and it's not over yet. It's just one-third. The sun, the moon, the stars... They're all suffering because of this war. One third less light. The Bible teaches the troubles of this are not merely the results of natural events. There is a spiritual battle going on between good and evil. I think that we're immune from fully understanding that because we're peaceful right now. Afterwards, we're going to have dinner and we're going to go about our life and Things that seem okay. But there is a war going on. It's like the Christians that are being martyred all over the world. We're not there. It's not happening to us. And we feel pretty safe. And we feel, when we're aware of it, we go, boy, that's pitiful and sad. And I pray for those people. But we're not affected by it. This is going to affect every single human being that is alive. 
There's no way you will not be affected by it. Or your children, or your grandchildren, or your somebody who you love is going to be affected by it. third part of everything. Then we find that in Revelation 8.13 we get a declaration. As I watched I heard an eagle that was flying in the midair call out loud with a loud voice saying, whoa, whoa, whoa to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. We've talked about four. There's three more to come. John saw an eagle that was flying high in the sky. In fact, it seemed to be between heaven and earth. It could see everything. It could see what was happening in the battle. It could see what was happening on the earth. And it says, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's what's coming. <coughs> he could see the three judgments that were getting ready. Earth was going to suffer greatly. These judgments must happen. Satan and his servants must be completely defeated. Then Christ will rule. But even with these four judgments so far, people still refuse to honor and follow God. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray I pray for the ones that will be on this earth, be it us, be it our children, our grandchildren, other people, whoever is here. I pray they know your son, Jesus Christ, is their savior. I pray, Father, for the ones that will be suffering through as one third of the earth is burned up. I pray for the ones that will be suffering through when one third of the seas are destroyed. I pray for the ones who will be suffering when one-third of all the fresh waters will be destroyed. I pray for the ones that will suffer through the next three trumpets, Father. Father, I just pray that you impress upon our heart that we need to understand what's coming to this world, that we should not let this world and these temporary things that sometimes upset us, make us mad, these are so minor compared to what's going to happen. We should be focusing on telling other people about Jesus Christ and how to be saved from what's coming. The earth is on fire. We just don't see the flames yet. The earth is dying. We just don't see the death throes yet. Father, we pray for Jesus to return, knowing full well that we're praying for these judgments to start. I add that to all the other prayers. I add them in the name of Jesus Christ. As they come up to you, Father, you are worthy. We praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. <laughs>